In the endless dark sea of space, where time drifts slower than thought, one pulse of light can change everything humanity believes it knows. Two nights ago, that pulse came, not from a nearby star, not from any human-made satellite, but from 3i-ATLAS, an interstellar traveler no one expected to move, much less speak. At exactly 2.14 universal time, telescopes from New Zealand to Germany captured the same impossible event, a sudden fourfold surge in luminosity from 3i-ATLAS, an object 300 million kilometers from Earth, not gradual, not random a perfect instantaneous explosion of brightness lasting six minutes. It was as if the object blinked at humanity. Within minutes, amateur astronomers flooded online forums with identical readings. The timestamps matched down to the second. Screenshots from different continents looked like copies of the same graph. A flat baseline, then a vertical spike, as sharp as a heartbeat monitor. By dawn, what had started as a quiet observation by a small town astronomer in Germany had become a global scientific emergency. Maria Schultz, who first spotted the anomaly through her 12-inch telescope, thought her software was malfunctioning. But when she recalibrated, cross-checked her atmospheric data, and verified her star charts, everything lined up perfectly. Her equipment was fine. The anomaly was real. Within the hour, her discovery was echoed by observers in Brazil, Japan, Arizona, and New Zealand. None of them had coordinated yet all recorded the exact same pulse. The result? The entire astronomy community snapped awake. Discord servers lit up. Skywatch forums froze under the weight of traffic. Citizen observatories compared notes and confirmed the impossible. Even NASA's Deep Space Network abandoned its ongoing Mars telemetry sessions to swing its 70-meter dishes toward 3i-ATLAS sacrificing critical mission time for a mystery that defied every model of natural cometary behavior. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. No known object in our solar system, or beyond, brightens by a factor of four in under six minutes. Even the legendary Comet Holmes outburst of 2007 took two full days to achieve similar intensity. This was something different, something controlled, Within 24 hours, the International Astronomical Union called its first emergency session in nearly a decade. Data flowed in from the Very Large Telescope in Chile, Gemini North in Hawaii, and China's Fast Radio Array. Every observatory dropped its planned targets. All eyes pointed at the same coordinates, towards something small, distant, and no longer behaving like a rock or a comet. And then, silence. The same scientists who had been posting live data suddenly vanished from online discussions. Research groups went dark. Even NASA's public data feeds froze for several hours under the excuse of system maintenance. By the following morning, only fragments of information trickled out. Raw radar reflections showing non-gravitational acceleration, minor bursts of gamma radiation, and a strange infrared plateau 30 Kelvin hotter than predicted. Whatever 3i-ATLAS had done, it had triggered a planetary-scale response and a digital blackout. For the first time in modern astronomy, every nation, every telescope, and every satellite was staring at the same unknown object. The coordination was seamless, almost rehearsed. The last time anything like this happened was in 1994, when Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 threatened to collide with Jupiter. But that was predictable. This wasn't. This was spontaneous, precise, and global. By the time the James Webb Telescope began collecting its infrared data, one thing became undeniable. 3i-ATLAS wasn't alone. Its readings showed a second, smaller body orbiting just 120 kilometers from the primary mass, locked in perfect formation. At first, scientists assumed it was debris, perhaps a fragment from the outburst. But as Webb continued its scans, the fragment maintained an exact distance and synchronized velocity. No drift, no decay. It orbited with mechanical precision. And unlike any natural object, the smaller body emitted faint microwave radiation, heat signatures consistent with temperature regulation. Someone, or something, was managing its thermal state. As the story broke, the name quietly changed across internal networks. 
no longer 3i slash ATLASC slash 2025 R2. Now, it was the 3i slash ATLAS complex, a name that hinted at design, not coincidence. By midnight, an unspoken tension gripped the astronomical community. Was humanity witnessing a natural phenomenon or the first evidence of intelligence beyond our star? No one could say, but one truth echoed across every private channel and encrypted feed. Whatever was happening, it wasn't random. It was coordinated, and perhaps, just perhaps, it was watching us back. For two days, the world's best instruments watched 3 i slash a -T -L -A -S in total silence. No more brightening, no more gamma spikes, no new data, just a cold, drifting object on a dark trajectory beyond Mars. But then, at 3.07 Universal Time, the silence broke. Every telescope on Earth, every dish, every satellite, registered a synchronized surge from the same coordinates. The pulse came in three distinct bursts, each exactly 247 seconds apart. To the untrained eye, it looked like noise, but to scientists, the intervals were too precise to ignore. Nature is chaotic, not rhythmic. And yet, here was rhythm, steady, deliberate, mechanical. Inside NASA's data room, a red banner flashed across every monitor, coherent pattern detected. At that same moment, radio antennas in Chile, Japan, and South Africa picked up a faint but structured signal directed toward Earth's orbital path, a signal that wasn't supposed to exist. For 12 seconds, 3i slash ATLAS emitted a focused radio beam, tight, narrow, and mathematically perfect. And then it stopped, just as suddenly as it began. Within minutes, the data hit encrypted channels and the panic started. Deep Space Network engineers confirmed the signal wasn't solar interference, nor reflection, nor cosmic background. It was real, coherent, modulated, and bearing a frequency alignment that every physicist recognized immediately. The hydrogen line. The hydrogen line is the universal handshake of science, the one frequency every intelligent civilization capable of radio astronomy would know. Hydrogen is the alphabet of the cosmos, Whoever, or whatever, sent that beam understood that. But it wasn't just the frequency that terrified researchers. It was the timing. Exactly 12 seconds after the beam ended, Earth's magnetic field wavered. Sensitive magnetometers recorded a pulse echoing through the ionosphere, altering the Schumann resonance, the natural heartbeat of our planet, by 0.02 hertz. That fluctuation lasted less than two seconds, but to those who knew what they were looking at, it was unmistakable. The signal had touched us. Publicly, NASA called it a localized magnetic anomaly. Privately, the International Asteroid Warning Network issued Containment Directive Helios, ordering all institutions to withhold new 3 i slash a -T -L -A -S data until further assessment. But by then, it was too late someone had already leaked a spectrogram. It came from inside the Square Kilometre Array Observatory in Western Australia. A junior researcher, anonymous even to this day, uploaded the raw waveform to a private physics forum. Within hours, users reconstructed the signal, and what they found made even the most skeptical scientists go silent. When the waveform was converted into a visual spectrogram, a pattern emerged, six perfect hexagons spiraling around a single central point of light, it wasn't random noise, it was geometry, symmetry, intention. The shape matched pixel for pixel. The James Webb Telescope's most recent infrared image of the 3 i slash ATLAS complex. Two bodies moving in harmony, surrounded by a faint hexagonal halo. The realization hit like an asteroid. The transmission was a reflection, a mirror of its own structure, encoded in radio. It wasn't just broadcasting, it was showing us what it was. Experts called it the blueprint hypothesis. The signal was a schematic, a three-dimensional mapping of orbital resonances, harmonics, and alignments that eerily matched the architecture of our solar system. Each hexagon represented an orbital position with one glaring absence. At the center wasn't the sun, it was a void, an empty space and the current position of that void matched the location of 3i slash ATLAS itself. Was it a message, a calibration, 
Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb had another term, a synchronization event. He proposed that the 12-second signal wasn't communication, it was tuning, like an instrument adjusting its pitch to the orchestra of our solar system. In other words, 3i slash ATLAS wasn't talking to us. It was aligning with us. When that theory hit the underground networks, chaos followed. Conspiracy forums lit up with claims that the object was artificial. Whistleblowers hinted that the web team had observed geometric diffraction spikes, edges, corners, repeating surfaces, something engineered. Even more disturbing, multiple amateur astronomers independently reported seeing the halo around 3i slash ATLAS intensify, a soft, glowing envelope expanding outward like a breathing organism. And yet, there were no official statements, only silence. Behind closed doors, Project Helios expanded into a multi-agency task force spanning NASA, ESA, and private contractors. The leaked memo described 3i slash A T L A S as a dynamically active system demonstrating artificial coherence. But that phrase was buried under layers of classification. Publicly, astronomers returned to discussing solar flares and asteroid tracking. Privately, they stared at the spectrograms in disbelief. Because when they overlaid the decoded blueprint onto our solar system's orbital map, the alignment wasn't approximate, it was perfect. Each vertex of the hexagonal pattern corresponded to a gravitational resonance point between major planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Earth, all locked in rhythm. And at the heart of it all, the void, the position of 3i slash ATLAS, as if the object wasn't visiting at random, but arriving on schedule. If this story sent a chill down your spine, do the one thing the algorithms can't silence. Share it. Post it on X. Send it to your astronomy group. Because if 3i slash ATLAS is really tuning itself to us, the next pulse won't be for scientists. It'll be for everyone. And before that moment comes, like this video, subscribe, and keep your notifications on. Because when the next signal arrives, you'll want to be here to hear it first. For nearly a week after the 12-second transmission, the cosmos went still again. 3i slash ATLAS drifted quietly beyond Mars's orbit, its once blazing light reduced to a cold, steady glow. To most, the event was over. But deep inside underground research networks, the decoding had only just begun. In a sealed data lab beneath Canberra, Australia, a small team of radio physicists continued reconstructing the original waveform from the leaked square kilometer array files. The pattern, the six hexagons around a glowing center, had already shaken the scientific world. But when the team filtered the waveform through phase inversion algorithms, something new appeared. Hidden beneath the visible pattern was a secondary harmonic, a modulation that shouldn't exist. It pulsed faintly at a rhythm of 7.83 hertz the same frequency as Earth's natural Schumann resonance, the planet's electromagnetic heartbeat. At first, they thought it was interference, but the amplitude was too exact, too deliberate. The hidden layer wasn't noise, it was an echo of Earth itself. That meant one thing, when 3i slash ATLAS sent its signal, it had already analyzed our planet's electromagnetic signature and matched it. It was, in a literal sense, speaking our frequency, when the data was relayed to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the reaction was immediate. A classified memo went out across secure channels titled, Reciprocity Hypothesis. The conclusion was simple and terrifying. The beam from 3i slash ATLAS was not the first message. It was a reply. According to the report, Earth had unknowingly transmitted a fragmented signal weeks earlier an accidental electromagnetic pulse generated by the synchronized tracking of 3i slash ATLAS across thousands of instruments, satellites, and radar networks. The energy from that collective observation had bounced off the object's surface, encoded with our unique radio fingerprint. In other words, when humanity looked at 3i slash ATLAS, it looked back and answered, but it didn't stop there. New telemetry from the James Webb Telescope revealed faint microwave oscillations surrounding the 3i slash ATLAS complex, as if it were generating a magnetic field bubble, steady, self-contained, pulsing like a heart. Then, 
For the first time in over a week, the object moved, not drifted, maneuvered. Its smaller companion shifted 20 degrees relative to the primary mass, maintaining distance but changing formation in what appeared to be a controlled burn. Infrared sensors recorded an instant spike in temperature, followed by a sudden cooling phase exactly 12 minutes later. Some described it as an adjustment, others as a signal alignment event. Within hours, rumors leaked from within the European Space Agency that both bodies of the 3I-ATLAS complex were now in perfect harmonic synchronization with Earth's orbital frequency. If true, it meant that the objects weren't just observing. They were synchronizing with the planet's motion, rotation, and electromagnetic resonance. And then quietly, something began happening on Earth. All across the globe, magnetometers and ELF receivers started detecting faint, rhythmic pulses, barely measurable, yet identical to those recorded in the aftermath of the 12-second beam. Every 247 seconds, a whisper of resonance swept through the ionosphere, too weak to notice, but too structured to ignore. At first, only labs noticed. Then pilots reported strange static bursts over the Pacific. Marine communication systems flickered for milliseconds at a time. And then, an eerie pattern emerged. The disruptions followed the same timing, 247 seconds apart. Someone, or something, was still transmitting. Governments scrambled to contain the data. Power grids underwent unscheduled diagnostics. Radio telescopes were quietly told to deprioritize interstellar sources. But one image slipped through. An unverified feed from a Chilean observatory showed the 3I-ATLAS complex glowing faintly, encased in a hexagonal field of luminescent plasma. To those who saw it, it looked less like a comet and more like a machine powering up. Meanwhile, in Cambridge, a small group of astrophysicists led by Dr. Eleonora Voss had been analyzing the 12-second signal's deeper structure. When they mapped its harmonics in 3D, the resulting geometry wasn't random. It corresponded almost perfectly to the orbital distances between Earth's planets, but with one chilling deviation. At the center of the model wasn't the Sun. It was a point, empty, dark, and mathematically defined by one coordinate, the current position of 3 i slash a t l a s That realization forced one conclusion. The beam wasn't meant to communicate, it was meant to calibrate. Something out there had locked onto the solar system, like a musician tuning a string before the performance begins. And that's when the final anomaly struck. At 2.12 UTC, while the James Webb telescope was focused elsewhere, its secondary instruments detected a momentary interference spike, so strong it overloaded the detectors for exactly 12 seconds, the same interval as the original beam. Every instrument on Earth synced to that frequency, magnetometers, satellites, even smartphones connected to global positioning networks, recorded a faint pulse, a single echo, and then nothing. No follow-up signal, no pattern, just silence. A silence heavy enough to feel like a stare. Within days, 3i slash ATLAS dimmed again, fading into the black distance beyond Mars. Its companion followed in perfect symmetry until both were gone, beyond the range of Webb's sensors. Officially, the event was archived as unverified transient phenomena. Unofficially, scientists who studied the signal called it something else, contact. But not the kind humanity expected. It wasn't a greeting. It wasn't a warning. It was a synchronization, a resonance check, as though something beyond the stars was simply making sure we were still here and maybe, just maybe, preparing for what comes next. If this story made your pulse match that 247 second rhythm, then you already understand. Something out there hurt us. So don't let this vanish into the static. Share it on X, on Facebook, anywhere you can before it's buried. And hit like, subscribe, and keep your notifications on. Because when the signal returns, you'll wanna remember where you were the first time Earth was answered.